as we join the dual carriageway. Let's depress the fun pedal, shall we? Oh, dear me. <laughs> oh, it's another one. Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now, as you can see, last week I got to drive one of the most talked about new BMWs of the year, the iX. A car with very challenging looks on the outside, a stunning interior, and, well, turned out to be a very impressive car to drive. There is much to talk about. Unfortunately, on the day, the weather wasn't on my side. It was very challenging conditions, a lot of drizzle in the air, and it meant that I had to film the video in quite a different format to my normal style. But before we head over to see how I got on, I just wanted to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshock. Now, Surfshock is an internet VPN. VPNs basically hide your location on the internet and can be used in a number of different ways. It may well be that you want to access streaming services that aren't available in your home country, for example. I use one when I'm traveling abroad and I want to access services that require a UK IP address, such as content on demand or video streaming. But the one you might not know about is when you're booking your holiday online and you want to check the price of a flight or a hotel and you go back to check the flight again and the price has gone up, well, VPNs can help you with that too. So all you need to do if you're interested is click on the link I've placed in the description or in the pinned comment, enter promo code PETROL and you will receive 83% off the Surfshark VPN. Uh, and Surfshark also comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So thank you Surfshark for helping me make this video. Let's head over to Farnborough to see how I got on with the iX. Now, very unusually for me, I'm actually going to start this video on the inside of the car because it's raining and it's this horrible kind of damp rain that just gets all over lenses and just makes filming outside almost impossible. And although the outside of this car, I think for me, this is one of the most challenging designs and challenging looking BMWs there has ever been. And if you don't like the front grille on the new 3 or 4 series, you're probably not gonna like it on this either. Certainly when the first images of this car hit the internet earlier this year, I kind of looked at them and I thought, wow, are they really gonna make that? I mean, it just jarred me completely. But I must say, this is the first day today that I've actually had a chance to see one up close. And it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The outside is a very challenging design, but in a way I really like that because it's a really challenging car. It's built as an EV from the ground up. Um, it's this kind of big SUV luxury car format, and there is plenty to talk about. But in a way I'm quite glad I started on the inside of the car because this interior is something else. It really, really is. Uh, it's got this new sweeping screen that we've seen in the uh, X4 as well. And, and I can't say how much I like that screen enough. If we just start the car, it makes some great noises. It's just, perhaps there is a bit too much information on it. I'll give you an example. If I go into the climate control menu, <laughs> this, this is just for my side. And this is just for the passenger side. There's so much you can do. You can put cooled seats, vented seats. You can change your blowers, your uh, amount of um, uh, uh, force on the blowers. I've got heated steering wheel. There's, there's almost too much on there. But generally speaking, the menus are really easy to navigate through with your finger or you can use the jog wheel. But let's kind of focus in on this floating console here. There's a lovely kind of wood finish uh, here and the rest of the um, car is basically just bathed in leather. I've also got a, a, the crystal um, finish on the jog wheel, on the gear selector and also on the door you've got your um, electric seating controls with a lot of blingy crystal. I'm sure that's not going to be for some of you. I, I'm not a big fan. Kind of last time I saw this was in an M8 competition and I had the crystal gear selector which I just thought was way over the top for me. 
um, but the rest of the interior this steering wheel is just well it's just so unlike anything else in any other BMW it's a very weird shape we'll find out what it's like to drive shortly relatively simple in terms of the clutter on the steering wheel itself uh, and the ability to kind of move it and get it into a nice steering position and then I've got this tray under here with a couple of cups holders a couple of different USB and a 12 volt socket and a wireless charge mat for my phone and then in here that's rather cool as well loads and loads of storage I quite like that but it is a very funky interior and then if we look backwards it is dominated by this massive pan roof but the cool thing is I've got this electrochromatic glass so if I just kind of uh, do this you can it goes dark and light and I just think that's very very cool very McLaren-esque but yeah beautiful beautiful interior so let's head off up the road go for a bit of a drive and explore this car some more this is the the highest spec battery pack power and acceleration performance. This is the M50, there's also a 40 model as well. But yeah, I quite like this. Even little things like if you get in it and you're trying to work out how to get out, there's no traditional lever to open the door, there's a button that you just click with your finger. Quite like that. The iX xDrive 50 has two electric motors, 190 kilowatts on the front axle and a larger 230 kilowatts at the rear. Their combined 523 horsepower will get this two and a half ton car to 62 in just 4.6 seconds. That weight comes from a huge 112 kilowatt hour battery pack. BMW quote a WLTP range of up to 380 miles. The xDrive 40 has a smaller 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and less weight, but still delivers impressive performance and range. Okay, let me talk you through my instant impressions of driving this car pretty much from the get-go. It feels like a big car. The, the first thing you get when you get behind the wheel of the car is the steering wheel is a very unusual shape. I've kind of driven cars with square-ish steering wheels. You drive, you know, some of the Aston Martins have almost a squared off steering wheel. This is almost a kind of like hexagon shape. It's, uh, it, is, it is a bit weird and I think it will take a little bit of getting used to because where I normally like to drive, the kind of quarter two and quarter past there, is just a little bit low and that's a little bit high. So I think I just need to find my way around that. Everything else on the steering wheel though is, is I like the fact it's been paired back. We're then dominated by the screen and as I said in my i4 review, I like that a lot and I'm not normally a big fan of stuck on screens but what I like about this one is it doesn't look stuck on it looks like it's floating in free space <laughs> it's really cleverly done and then the fit and finish of this car we're in is just stunning I mean it's got so much leather work in here again uh, just like the i4 if you want to go into one pedal driving because you don't have a a traditional gear selector in this car like a kind of gear that you push to the left in the i4 in this you just pull the gear stick back and I'm now in B and I've engaged one pedal driving so we'll kind of see what that feels like as we come up to this traffic light just roll it yeah it's it's the same it's really nice and, and strong I mean obviously you can turn it off if you want to Now this, um, the interesting things about this car is battery pack wise, I think this actually has the biggest battery pack of any electric car I've ever driven at over 110 kilowatt hours. Now even a big Tesla, you know, Model X, normally they go up to about 100 kilowatt hours. So it's a big old battery pack and it promises north of 300 miles of range. Whether you get that or not, again, I am limited today. My gauges state that I've got 78% of battery charge left and a range of 232 miles. Um, again, same old problem though, we are on press drive, so this car will be being driven relatively hard, which won't do a great deal for its kind of 
predicted range numbers at all. It is super quiet in here and super smooth. I, I just feel cosseted, I feel in luxury. And I also feel in something that's just, I don't know, a bit more space age and a bit more funky, even more so uh, than the i4 I drove the other week because that that had a, a very familiar BMW feeling to it. It felt like you were in a kind of slightly jazzy 4 Series Grand Coupe. This, this doesn't, this doesn't feel like any BMW I've ever been in before. Ergonomically, it's very different, this floating console here, and just the whole feel of the car is incredibly different. But I like it, I like it a lot. I like the edgy interior design an awful lot more than I like the exterior design. It's growing on me, this car. The rear end view for me is far better than the front end view. I think the front end view will take a while to really kind of settle in. So as we join the dual carriageway, let's depress the fun pedal, shall we? Oh, dear me. <laughs> oh, it's another one. Now, this car weighs over two and a half tons yet the acceleration when you i mean that that instant kick is phenomenal not to 60 as i said is around about four and a half seconds i have no doubt that bmw have been kind of slightly under egged that i probably think you could do it quicker than that it just has that feeling but it it it, it has the smoothness and the effortlessness wafting of of that kind of big comfy SUV that you want you know you could do miles and miles in this I'm sure but when you want to push on a bit it's it's a really quick car the thing that the thing that instantly gets me though is is it's so quiet it's so smooth you can't that the suspension's dealing with all of this kind of uh, tarmac and any imperfections beautifully and I'm just at the moment in the kind of comfort type mode oh I like I see now I like these haptics in here so these this panel here looks like it's got a wood finish but it's not they're actually I'm able to go into some of my settings if I just go into sport mode I'm now in sport mode so that that throttle response I had before was just in in a normal normal mode this is now even more edgy and even more sporty oh, apparently oh yeah whiplash i quite like little things like i've got somewhere to put my smartphone here although it does rattle a bit or i can just drop it on the charge mat underneath that floating console it's now charging uh, i quite like that there we go wireless charging active um and I've got, you know, I can use Apple CarPlay and stuff if I want to. I, I'm not going to do that today. I'm in the car for such a short period of time. It's not really worth me pairing my phone with the car. The iX is a technology showcase with operating system 8 at its heart. It even has augmented reality sat-nav instructions. It's time, however, to discuss the elephant in the room. It's price. The xDrive 50 starts from £98,000. Being a typical press car, this iX has the Visibility Pack, Technology Plus Pack, Comfort Plus Pack, Sky Lounge Pack and upgraded 22-inch alloys. In all, £16,800 of options, so the on-the-road price is just shy of £116,000. I'll leave you to take that one in. Mm. 25 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour <laughs> that's this car's party piece and you would end up just driving it all day like a complete and utter hooligan it it kind of shouldn't do that it's so big uh, and weighs so much it shouldn't have that turn of pace but it, it really does and i know it's it's a lot of money but where from where i'm sitting it, it feels like 
every single penny of that is money well spent. It's a very, very lovely place to be. I would love to spend a little bit more time in this car because I'm sure it has hidden secrets that open themselves up the more time you're in it. There's lovely little red LED strip lights at the top of the doors. There's lovely down lighting on the outside of the car when you park it in low light conditions. But it's just the exquisite way it goes down the road. It's so smooth and so quiet. And there's, no, there's nothing to hide any of that noise. And I like that a lot. And I think the thing we're all going to have to get our heads around, whether we like it or not, is this is the way things are going. And I know there are some other alternative fuel sources. We could see maybe more hydrogen combustion and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. We might see a little bit more synthetic fuels, but electric and hybrid assisted uh, petrol and diesel engines, that, that's the way it's going. And more and more cars now I'm driving on these types of press drives are electric vehicles. And I have to say, if, if you're going to do an electric vehicle, you want it to just feel special and be a bit edgy and a bit different. And this car has that in spades. Arguably for some, it's probably got a few too many spades for its own good, especially the front end. I do think the front end is a bit garing. I think... I, I, I kind of got my head around the 3 and 4 series now, especially in M guys. I think it will take a while to really get my head around this one and I think for me the reason is those kind of the 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 decals or the you know the kind of silver arrows that are painted on the front of this I just I don't really get it if I'm honest um, maybe just I would have just left it black or had some other kind of um, some other kind of artwork on there I wouldn't have tried to make it look like um, the, the grill from a um, you know, from a, a, a normal car. But when, when you come out of a corner, you just you just do end up burying the throttle. Yeah. Let me know what do you think. I think the more and more electric cars that I drive, the better they seem to be. You know the the. The delivery of power with this it's got so much you get get so much confidence it's coming through all four wheels it's got buckets of torque like seriously large amounts of torque loads and loads of grunt and it just makes it a really fun car to drive so my final <laughs> my final impressions of the ix i like it i like it a lot and i, and I didn't think i would i I didn't think when I first saw those images that anything could overcome the exterior looks of the car. And actually, for me, the interior does that. And I'm sat on the inside, I don't really see the outside. I think this is one of the nicest and most special feeling interiors of a car I've sat in for a long, long time. I adore that curved screen. I really do think it's a game changer for BMW. I really like this floating console. You can keep the crystal dials. I'm not a big fan of those at all. Far, far too much bling for me. I just have a nice knurled aluminium dial there. That would be nice. I do quite like the little haptic uh, feedback buttons that are underneath this kind of faux wood. That's a very nice touch indeed. Steering wheel, yeah. I'd have preferred just a round steering wheel, but it kind of is in keeping with everything else. And then just for me, the outstanding quality of this car is its smoothness of ride and its power delivery are just something else. They really are. And the, the, the change of pace when you put your foot on the throttle is, is mind blowing. The big question for me, and it's one that I would need to answer by spending a lot more time in the car, is is the range anywhere near what's quoted? You know, when you start seeing cars with more than 300 miles of range quoted, that's what we've all been asking for. And I know some people go, oh, well, 400 miles of range. Well, I think you get to a point where you need so much battery pack in a car to get that 400 miles of range, that that's just not a practical option. Yeah, you know, you can you can get for, unless, unless we see huge leap forwards in battery technology, which I'm sure will come, there's still this kind of payoff between, you know, battery capacity, motor efficiency and range. And at the moment, it's a big challenge because if you want a car to be doing 
you know, 350, 400 miles or even north of 400 miles, the penalty at the moment is weight. This car weighs two and a half tons. And a, and a good chunk of that is gonna be the battery pack because all the frame and all the chassis is kind of aluminium and lightweight materials. Um, so, you know, it would be great to see what, what this car does in terms of range and what it's like to live with. But I'd love to know what you think of this. For me, I think this is one of the most exciting BMWs I've driven for a long time. I love the interior. The exterior looks will still take a while to grow on me, but I like the fact that they're challenging and edgy. But if this is the future of BMW on the inside, I like it. The future is strong. But anyway, guys, I'd love to know what you think. But for now, if you enjoyed that one, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe.